This is FYI on your TV, brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got Steve Went in the studio with me. Thank you very much for joining us today, all the way from Kempville. Thanks. You are the director, but you're also the president of the North Granville Community Theater Group. Thanks for joining us today. You have a play coming on. We have a play coming up. It's called The Admirable Crichton. And uh, we're, we're just in rehearsal now. We're, that play is going to be showing at the Urbandale Centre at the end of May, from May the 24th to 28th. And we're getting pretty excited about bringing this show. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, The Admirable Crichton, it, <coughs> it was, I think, one of the biggest shows of 1902. And it, uh, it's an interesting story. It starts out in a uh, manor house with uh, kind of the rich people and the servants. And they're kind of doing their thing. They're going to serve tea and so on. But the lord of the manor has this progressive idea, progressive for the time, and he thinks that people should be more equal. So once a month he says that the rich people will play the role of the servants, and the servants will come and be served tea by the rich people. Everyone hates that. The, the rich people hate it, and the servants hate it. <laughs> right? The servants because hate it too, okay. <laughs> yeah, the servants are just uncomfortable with the idea. Anyway, the mm -hmm. lord has spoken, so... There, that's the, the tea they're going to have. And at the tea, he announces that there, uh, a, a group of them are going on a cruise. Now, but they're not going to bring all the servants, only a few. And again, everyone is really up in arms about this um, sea cruise that they're planning to take. Anyway, once again, what the Lord of the Manor says is what's going to happen. So off they go on the sea cruise. Uh, and that's Act 1. Now in Act 2, it turns out that the ship is wrecked and they're just a small group of cast-offs that come onto, the, onto shore on this little tropical island. And so it's a little bit like what happens in Gilligan's Island, right? And so one of the things that uh, we wonder then is how is this group of individuals tr that are transferred to this tropical place, how are they going to survive? Uh, what's going to happen with the natural class structures? Are the rich people still going to be the leaders? And are the servants still going to be the, uh, you know, kind of the underlings on the island? Or is it going to turn out that actually the servants are better at chopping down trees and catching fish and whatever? So anyway, um, the play explores that kind of class structure and we, we see a little bit of a reversal of roles. It's, it's Leadership yeah. skills, all that sort of things coming into play. All that kind Survival of thing. skills. <laughs> yeah. So it's really fun to look at this play um, from a modern perspective because I think we're all very interested in, in topics like who's in charge and, and um, should you know, position be merit based or, or you know, just based on history? Of the, is your family history enough to? to explain why you're doing so well in life or do you have to actually earn your place? That's one reason that um, this play is interesting. But another is just by who wrote it because it was written by Sir J. M. Barrie who um, after this great success a few years later then he wrote the play Peter Pan. And so Peter Pan of course is of a lot of interest to, to, to modern viewers and it's, in, it's, it's cool to see other, another side of J.M. Barrie, like what message was he giving the audiences a few years before Peter, Peter Pan? Again, this island that the people get shipwrecked on is a little bit, to me anyway, it's a little bit like the islands that we see in the Peter Pan story. Oh, wow, and a nice little connection there too, now that you know it's the same writer. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 so absolutely. people, um, People that are interested in kind of, J.M. Barry, and this is a little bit of a sideline, but he was such an interesting person. He had his own uh, cricket club. It wasn't, it wasn't very good at playing cricket. But if you look at the people who were in his cricket club, it was amazing, like Rudyard Kipling, A.A. Uh, a. A. Milne, who wrote, um, what did he write again? That little the, the Pooh Bear. Oh, <laughs> Winnie the Pooh, yes. Winnie yeah, the Pooh, Winnie the yeah, Pooh that's yeah. it. Um, Arthur Conan Doyle, who wrote Sherlock Holmes. Um, Chesterton, uh, Jerome K. Jerome, all these people that were his personal friends and came to and, and were members of his cricket club. And you can kind of see in the play um, how he's influenced by, by uh, his 
his literary friends that, that was like a really important hangout for these people in England around the year, like around the year 1900. So when we see what happens on the island, some of it reminds us that Rudyard Kipling had written this story, The Man Who Would Be King. It was one of the really big stories, uh, one of the big novels at the time. And we wonder if Crichton, the butler, oh. is, is kind of like a little like the man who would be king once he gets to that island. I don't want to tell you the whole story of the play. Yeah, yeah connect That's, the dots. Yeah. yeah, connect the dots. Yeah. Now, we were talking before we started taping, too. You've been with this, this theater group for a long time. We did a bit of math. We figure about 40 years. Well, maybe, yeah. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't able to exactly calculate mm -hmm. when we started. The, the first show that I was involved with, with this theater group was called We'll Meet Again. It's sort of a, a variety show of um, songs and jokes and things that's supposed to happen in a, a pub during, um, during wartime. And so we sang a lot of Vera Lynn, Lynn songs and that kind of thing. So that show has been uh, brought several times to Kempville, uh, sometimes by our theater group and sometimes independently, um, but really uh, with a lot of overlap among the people that are involved in the show. So that's my first involvement with this uh, group. But I've been in several plays for them. I've directed uh, plays for the theater group as well. Yeah, you've had your foot in, in all the pies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, with these amateur organizations, uh, it's, it's really good if people that get involved get to experience all kinds of different things. So we get actors on stage, but we get other people uh, working in the control booth and doing uh, technical sound and light, that kind of thing. Uh, we get people doing publicity, we get people um, working on costumes. Can you imagine? We have in this play that's coming up, we have, um, I think, 25 uh, actors on stage at, at one point. Wow. Now, oh, there's only less than half of them have dialogue, so a lot of them are kind of walk-on roles, but they all need costume. So our, we, uh, we're very lucky to have someone that's very good at costume. You can just imagine what she's working on right now, trying to think of how we can put different kinds of costumes on, uh, on all these people and to make them look like um, 1902. And not only that, what happens to their costume when they're shipwrecked on the island and then things fall into tatters over the uh, period of a couple of years? That's right. And nope. it's like you say, too, like there's, there's so much more to a play than the people you see up on the stage. There's the costume directors, there's the, uh, yourself, the director, sound and light. There's so much more to just what you see on the stage. And there's administration, too. Yes. Like we, we have a treasurer who looks after our bank account, that kind of thing. Like that's a, um, it's, it's like a, a lot of work to, to look after the business side of a, of a volunteer group. And they don't get that much exposure. So right. here's a word out for our treasurer. <laughs> right. Now you're performing at the Urbandale Center at the North Grenville uh, Municipal Center as well too. Uh, you have to do a lot of dancing and everything in terms of you, you've, you've had a couple of locations where you have to practice because there's other things going on at Urbandale as well too. So you've practiced in different locations and then you finally get the stage. That's right, that's typical mm -hmm. because um, the, the theater space at Urbandale Center is kind of in demand and um, when a group gets the theater stage, we're kind of limited. So I, I, it, it always is the case um, in, in our area that you're going to be rehearsing in various places and gradually bring the show to the stage. Um, just before we put on our show, uh, KYMTC, the Kempville Youth uh, Musical Theater Company, is putting on Matilda. And I think people should certainly think of attending Matilda at any rate, uh, they're going to move out of the stage just before we move in. And so that, um, that kind of scheduling means that we're usually pretty tight and, and we only get a few weeks on stage before our actual show. And the dates you're, you're performing too, you've, you start May 24th? Our performances run May 24th, which is a Wednesday, mm -hmm. um, through May 28th, which is a Sunday. So they're all uh, evening performances, except the Sunday is going to be a matinee Sunday afternoon. Now, how do people get tickets? The best way to get tickets is to go online, which is uh, www.ngct.ca. Well, that's one of the best ways. The other best way 
is uh, B and uh, H, the grocery store, is also going to be selling tickets for us. They're such a supportive team there at B and H, aren't they? They are. They are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, and they sell know, a lot of tickets and everything for everybody. And just in the context of this. Um, play when you think of what are we going to be serving those actors on stage yes. and we had some actors the other day by the way say they want to be served some actual food uh, so where would you get that kind of uh, 1902 english style food well i'd say you'd get it at the deli counter of bnh that's right that's <laughs> right and they'll make it for you <laughs> they're all part of our community they're wonderful sure. people the beverages so uh, again, the date's uh, May 24th to the 28th. That's right. At the Urbandale Center, and it's the Admirable Crichton. The Admirable Crichton. Okay. And, and so what makes him so admirable? That's why you have to stay and see this show. Excellent, excellent. Now, how did you choose that play? How does that happen? Well, um, I, I, <laughs> we, we, we look over a lot of plays, mm -hmm. but I think that the main reason for choosing this play was to, to show people the other big success that J.M. Barry had. Right. So it's, it, it's kind of like interesting to sort of contrast that with, with uh, Peter Pan and also to look at the whole uh, history of, of how the play came to be. I, uh, the other thing though is really this reversal of social classes that's really interesting. Because if you follow news these days, like to me this play plays right into what we're seeing every day in the news about what it is to be like the president and you know that kind of thing and and what happens right so you know it's uh, there's a message in here about how society organizes itself and I think that's uh, kind of important too well speaking of organization as well too yeah uh, you're always looking for volunteers you're looking for new members too how do people get a hold of you if they want to volunteer if they want to become a, an actor or Anything like that, more information? Yeah, for, for people that are interested in becoming involved <coughs> with the group, the mm -hmm. best place to start is our website, ngcc.ca. I think they can even send us an email, and the email is join at ngct.ca. I think oh. that email still works, so if we get any emails to that address, well, we'll... Check out the website, and you have a Facebook page as well. We have a Facebook page, yep. And, and, and um, people can message you there. Yeah, I actually spend a lot of time looking at our Facebook page. Our publicity group puts yes. these fantastic little uh, movie clips and so on, uh, Facebook and Instagram, and uh, they're a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, and I, I was looking at it just last night, too, and you've got a lot of the, uh, some shots of, of your play coming up, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, well thank you very much for joining us. Coming thank all you, the way Kathy. from North Grenville, Steve Went, the director of the Admirable Crichton, but you're also the president of the North Grenville Community Theatre Group. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Break a leg. Well, thanks. <laughs>